Hey everyone, um, welcome back to another video in forever. It's been three weeks since I posted, um, funny thing is I ran out of storage on my MacBook, so I couldn't record, and even after cleaning up, I only had 21 gigabytes. So I finally got some storage, cleaned up some stuff, so I'm, I'm back. And, uh, today we are going to be doing, um, a Photoshop UI tutorial. Not like a Photoshop tutorial, but just a UI tutorial. Has the part with all these tools on the side binding and all of these. So, to get started with, we have this image of Bixby Bridge Monterey. I will be um, explaining everything on this path bar and exampling it on this image. So, the first tool we have here is the move tool, or if you right click it, you can make it the artboard tool, which can literally just crop it technically, but not really. But the artboard tool is not, you really won't use it that much in Photoshop. Uh, you would rather use the actual crop tool. But actually, the move tool, all you have to do to get it is click this on your sidebar or press V. If you press V, you get the move tool. But because I selected our board, obviously it won't, but now. So with this, you can just, I mean, yeah, you can just move images like it says. Or like if I have like, um, if I have like, um, let's say, um, I have like two images here. Like let's pretend that this ocean is a second image. You'll be able to select the ocean, move it around this background, but right now I don't have two images open. And the next thing we have is the rectangular marquee tool. Um, basically, all it does is you can select in a rectangle. And a little trick with selecting stuff is that if you make a layer mask, it will actually crop it out and only do that. And then using stuff like the move tool, you can move around and put it inside of another image. So I'm just going to undo that. All you have to do is hit the layer mask down here. Speaking of this, I'm going to be showing the bottom part. So this right here is to delete the layer that you have. So like this, these are the layers. So if you delete this, you ask to delete um, this um, whatever layer you're using. I'm using like a big speed bridge of Monterey image. So I can delete it and I'm just going to command Z that. And then you see this is selected still. So what you do is you go back here and you just left click and it will undo the selection. Um, another thing that you can do is you can press the plus, that will add another layer. And you see these eyes right here? You can press these to toggle off and I just toggled off Bixby Bridge Monterey. So, but this layer is on top and it's transparent so it won't show anything. Um, the next thing we have in this bottom bar is we have these folders. If you hit the folder while having, let's say I have these two set up and you hit the folder, it won't do anything. But if you have the folder here and you can drag, I mean not drag, um, when the folder is above two items, um, it will put them both into a thing and you can just select the folder and that will select both the items. And then I'm just going to unlock that. And then, um, so I'm going to delete the folder now. Oh, yeah, see, um, it all there. I'm just going to command Z it out. And another trick is something very similar to the folder. So if you select two layers, I have the background in this Bixby Bridge image. Uh, you hold shift and you can select both of them. And then you can press command or control e and bundle it up into one whole layer. And then... We also have this little circle which is like half shaded where you can click and it'll show you things like a solid color gradient pattern. So it's just like normal, like with the gradient I can do something like this and make like a nice effect. And yeah. So this is up to you to go through. But um yeah. And then these two I need to have a layer selected. So if I select this layer, it will make a mask 
and then if it makes a mask remember i showed you this like selection tree where if you make a max mask it will cut it out so that's basically what a layer mask does this next thing is fx so what this will do is i'm going to model this with a bit of text here so i'm just going to make this uh have a new with a condensed board and i'm going to make the color like a bright green And I'm just gonna write uh, Bix. Wrong font. Uh, Bix B. Because this is the Bix Bridge, right? And I'm gonna drag this up here. And then so um, if I come here and I hit get the effects, we have like a bunch of stuff, but because this is text, uh, only a couple will show. So what I want is a drop shadow. I hit drop shadow it will bring up this little menu these are for the other effects uh, right here you see all these other effects when you hit effects the, the side part is for all of those i'm not going to go over each and every single one so once this opens up it will give the little um effect and then i can decrease the opacity of the effect i can increase the distance uh, i can increase the spread and then i can also increase the size And then so I can do stuff like that. So, but I'm just gonna cancel that out. And then so that's basically what the effects does. And then this link, I really don't know, never lets me use it. So that's up to you guys to figure it out and comment to me in the comment section. So um, next up we have the lasso tool. This is a very helpful tool. I mean, it may not seem like it at first when you're using Photoshop, but it is actually very helpful. What you can do with this is let's say you have this certain shape right here and you can just go all over it and you can technically like draw except you'll turn that into a selection so i can even use this little mask here and i can mask that part out like how i did to the rock so this is very helpful uh, it won't seem that helpful at first because you won't be able to use it Next up, we have an object selection tool. This is also really helpful. Uh, this is an auto object selection. So um, you can put this in, and then it will select a certain part of um, the image because this part is what it recognizes because that's all I selected. For example, let's say I select all of this. It will use the Adobe Smart feature and it will go all over. And then I can use the layer mask and cut this out. But um, this also has a couple more features. And again, to deselect something, you can just go here and you can click. Okay, so next up we have the quick selection tool. This is basically where you like draw over something, like with a pen tool, or not a pen tool, a brush tool, and they'll auto select it. Like you see how I'm doing, I'm just dragging. What you need to do is you have to hold left click or you just right click the brush tool. I mean, not the brush tool, the object selection tool. And it will bring up the menu. And then you can use the quick selection tool. It's also really nice when you want to select what you want. Except you want to make it fast without having to cut it out manually. The last one here is um, the magic wand tool. Again, like left click or right click it and then magic wand tool. So this, it's not like any of the others. You don't drag and give it a certain area. You just click and it'll highlight everything it can and everything it senses. And then I can cut it out and holy, that effect is cool. Um, this is a really good way to make like um, effects when you're trying to make some ink, when you're trying to use like an ink effect. This is really nice. So um, the next step, we have the crop tool or the perspective crop tool or the slice tool. I'll go all over all of those. But the crop tool, it's pretty basic. Like you can crop it and it'll show just that. That's just that's some basic stuff. If you purchased Adobe Photoshop, you should know what the crop tool does. Uh, this is the perspective crop tool. I don't know why because the image contains unsupported layer types. Okay, basically what you can do is, because I can't model this, is it's basically crop tool with distort. 
you can sort of distort your crop instead of just cropping it and make a nice perspective. That's probably why it's called the perspective draw. This is the next step is called split size tool. And you can just select a certain area and it will crop that out from the image. And then the last thing we have here is a slice select tool. It's basically selecting except you also slice. So um that's basically all there is. I accidentally command Z too much. Oopsie. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, next up we have um, the frame tool. So um, it basically makes a frame over a certain object and crops it out like how I just did right here. And like if you hold it, you can look at the little demo if you hold left click on it. Um, I don't know. It just showed. Oh yeah, no, you don't hold left click, you hover over it. So it will like show a little thing and you can put in a texture like how they put into the mug or you can drag in an image and put it inside. So there's all of that. We also have the eyedropper tool. This is pretty basic. Um, you can like go wherever you want in the image and you can use it and it will pick out the color that what you selected on. For example, this bridge right here. Or not these flowers, this seems yellow, and this is the exact shade of yellow. This is really helpful compared with the brush tool, which we'll go over after the spot heal tool. This spot heal tool is a chosen demo. You can go over to a certain place and then it can just wipe off or it can heal. And what it means by heal is, for example, let's say I'm not a big fan of bridges and I don't like this bridge, so just um. Just hold left click and just go over this bridge and then let go of left click and look, it perfectly blends it like it's an actual landscape. And then I can go over the middle to perfect it a bit more and this is a lifesaver to be honest. So um, I highly suggest using it. Um, it's also really, really helpful, but uh, I want to keep the bridge because I do like bridges in fact. Next up is the brush tool. This pairs up with the eyedropper tool. So the brush tool has three different modes. We have the brush tool, pencil tool, color replacement tool, mixer brush tool. So basically what the normal brush tool does is you can come up here, you can increase the opacity, the flow, all that. Um, that's not what this tutorial is for, so I'm not gonna be explaining that here. I'm just gonna be explaining the UI of Photoshop. So this brush tool, I have it on size 50, hardness 0. Now, my opacity is 10%, so let's make that 100% quickly. And then let's say I want to draw over this bridge with white. I can do that. So look. And let's say I want to color, I want to draw over this pink flower with the color of this flower because I really like that flower. Just press I, go into your eyedropper tool, press B, go back into your brush tool, and bam, you change the color, but again, you'll have to sync that to make it look believable. Uh, you can use the um, you can use the frame tool to do that, and you can just cover over whatever you have selected. Um, the next mode of this is the pencil tool. The pencil tool is basically just like a pen. You can just draw. That's pretty basic. So I personally don't find that useful. I never use it. Next up, we have the color replacement tool. And look, look at this mountain right here. This mountain is green. But let's say I want it to be the color of that flower. So instead of just going through a brush tool, this, okay. I'm going to select this mountain. Oh, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, oh yeah. So I'm going to select. I'm going to select this mountain and then once it's selected I'm going to go to this brush tool and look it won't go over and I can just make this mountain orange without making it look unnatural so um that's one of the modes and the next one is the mixer brush tool and I'm going to undo everything I just did so the mixer brush tool is basically mixing two colors so this um water and this sand so I'll have to um, take the color of the sand 
and I can just go into the water and if I just um, get a certain brush out of here uh, there should be a mixer uh, this is custom by the way these brushes are custom but this is just a model now look I'm mixing the sand with this water so it makes like an effect like that and again this brush is custom you won't be able to find this this is just to kind of give you an idea on what to do uh, next up we have the um, clone tool and uh, the clone stamp tool so if you just um, hold alt or option you can just clone an area but first you have to select whatever you want so you hold alt and then let's say I want to clone uh, this rock and then I hold alt and I let go of alt because that's selected and look wherever that little um, plus sign if you see under the rock there's a plus sign goes that's where it's going to be cloning so here now look I'm cloning that area here and then so that's how it works um, it is helpful in certain images but in images like this it really isn't and the next step is the pattern stamp tool if you left click it'll put in like a pat it'll put in like a pattern that you want like I'm just going to increase the brush size of this tool and look so it's like this it's like this and it's like this you see so it puts in the leaf because that's what I have selected so um I am going to command Z this and then now that goes away so I really feel like the pattern stamp tool is more helpful than the clone stamp tool because um, the clone stamp tool only works on certain images. So um, next up we have the history brush tool. Um, so basically you select that and like it shows in the demo, this dude used a brush and colored over this. And then he went to the history brush tool and he went over and it basically puts it back to what it was and then it uh, removes everything so um i can go back i press this little icon above the message and then i go into a uh, brush tool let's say i select this and so um i can't really model here because i don't know where the brush tool is or i can even select history brush so um, wherever whatever um you use your brush tool like i use a brush tool here and i need to f and to in order to use the history tool i need to find a certain part of the brush tool i used up here so look there's all these brush tools these are all the different times i use the brush tool but i need to find a certain part and then i can go over the history and then it will um, remove it so this is helpful except the thing is um it's kind of annoying to do because you need to find a certain part and then it will work so that's also why I can't model it here because that takes some time, trust me. And now we also have the art history brush tool. Basically the same thing. Yeah, it's basically the same thing just with the brush. And then the next up is the eraser tool. This is basic. Like just this isn't paint, I'm just erasing these parts of the image. So I'm just gonna command like that. And then we have the background eraser tool. And then when you have two layers and one of the layers is background like how I had here, but you can't see that, it will basically erase that when you go over. And then you also have the magic eraser tool. Just like the magic wand, it functions going through smart objects. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna come in and do that. Next up we have the gradient tool, it's originally the gradient tool, had the bucket tool now. So you come up here and you choose your different gradient. So this is where you slide to choose where the gradients go, like this much black and this much um, brown. And you can actually click here. Um, and then if you, I mean, not here, um, if you click here, you can change what color. Like let's say I want to make it this blue, and look, it'll make a blue back, black. And the second time, let's say I want to make uh, green. And then now look, so in this image, I can drag. I hit, I, I click, and then I drag to the other part of the image where I want the gradient to end, and bam, it'll make a really nice gradient. This is really nice. It's one of my favorite features. 
I use it when I don't have a background and I just want something that looks nice. So um, I really recommend um, learning how to utilize this properly. And the next up we have the paint bucket tool. Pretty basic again. Uh, uses Adobe's smart object software to find out um, what the objects are. And then uh, you select your color and all that. And you click and you'll fill it with whatever color you have. Um, yeah, and the 3D material drop tool, I don't know, it won't let me. Um, basically what the 3D material drop tool is, it'll drop not a color as a bucket, it'll drop a certain material, um, like the name states. I don't know why I want money. Next up we have the blur tool. Um, Let's say I want to blur out this bridge for some reason. Uh, I want to make the strength 100% on this. And then look, I'm slowly going over the bridge, and as you can see, it's slowly getting more blurred, and wherever I'm going is also getting more blurred, 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 all of that. So, yeah, you can understand that easily. Just command Z all of that, and that's going to take like, oh, okay. I want to have a long time. And then uh, the sharpen tool. It's basically when you sharpen the image. Uh, sharpening an image is pretty basic. And uh, this tutorial, again, is only a UI tool, a UI tutorial, and what all the tools do. Uh, so, like, I'm not going to be explaining what sharpen does. Except that, look, that's an example of sharpening. You see that bridge? It looks way more different. It makes it stand out. So, yeah. And then, okay, that doesn't look that good. And next up we have the smudge tool. It's, it has what it says in the name. If you have two certain colors using the brush tool, you can put it together and you can smudge it and make a nice blend. Um, next up we have the dodge burn and sponge tool. The dodge tool basically makes my mic arm just went into the desk. Okay, whatever, I'll fix that later. The dodge tool basically um what it really does is I can't model it on this image because it's not that type of image, but I'll show you the demo. So look here, um it basically yeah, look, so they have that little cute picture of a dog there, and they went over, and it just lightens it and gives it like a highlight. I can't do that here, because it's not that type of image. I can't lighten it. So, um, next up we have the burn tool. Basically, it's the same, except it sort of darkens it. Um, I, again, I can't sample it. Yeah. It's basically the same, just don't get it. Um, and then the sponge tool. This, the sponge tool I personally never use. And again, I can't model it on this image. So what it does is it just changes the saturation. Oh, they don't have a demo for it? Okay, so if you guys know what hue or saturation is, it basically changes that. So next up we have the pen tool. This is the one of the best tools to ever learn how to use. So basically, um, it's basically selection again. So let's say I want to select, I want to do this really fast so it's going to be really choppy. So let's say I want to select this certain part of the bridge. And then, so I go all around left clicking and I can also drag and do stuff like that for smooth cuts. This is a good tutorial, so I'm not going to perfect it. And then um, I left click all around. Like, look. So I left click all the way here. And the starting point, I just have to click there. And that's a selection. And then using the layer mask tool, I can... Okay, what? Oh, wrong layer. <laughs> um, here. Uh, using the layer mask tool, I can simply just cut it out like all the other uh, um, tools. So this is really good when the Adobe Smart Object Finder doesn't do well in certain images. 
and um, you have to manually cut it out. And then um, you can just cut it out, you can put it, you can do whatever you want, that's up to you. The freeform pen tool, this is basically the pen tool, except it's like the lasso tool, it's not choppy, it just goes smooth. And then you don't have to connect, um, you don't have to connect the points like how you did at the old one. You can just do this and it will automatically select. And then I can just select the certain points of that image that just looks weird. So, yeah, the, cur the curvature pen tool, the pen tool, except it curves, basically. Like, look, uh, I'll show you uh, a normal pen tool. It goes like this. You see these little choppies. The curvacy pen tool. I mean, sorry, the curvature pen tool. It'll curve. Like when you like hold left click, and then you can curve it all around. So you can do stuff like that, and you can cut it out like usual. So um, the pen tool is really useful overall, and we also still have more to go over. <laughs> um, this is the add anchor point tool. Okay, first I need to go into the pen tool. Um, so this is a pen tool. This little blue dot here. That's an anchor point. That's one of the main points. Now, um, I thought I wouldn't have to go over this, but guess what? I get it. I think I do. So I hold, I press this and I left click. Now this is one of the points. This is an anchor point. You see those little dots? This isn't an anchor point. Except it's one of the points of the thing. The anchor point is where it connects to. So then I can just do that and I can make a little thing like that. So that's basically what the anchor point pen tool does. It just adds the anchor points on it. And the delete anchor point tool deletes those anchor points. And the convert point tool is, um, here, I'll do this and then I'll go on to the convert point tool and I press that and look that used to be a point now it turned into an anchor point and this anchor point has now turned into um, a normal point so that's basically all it does um yeah so next up we have the pen tool I mean not the pen tool sorry the text tool so the text tool has horizontal vertical vertical type mass tool, vertical type and horizontal type mass tool. So the type mass tools, what they do is you can drag on like a certain texture or whatever inside of the text to make your own custom text, which is sick. Um, I have only done that twice. I don't really care, but it looks really nice. Um, so you can change the fonts here. Um, click up here and you can change the fonts. My favorite would be Helvetica New into Condense um, Bold. And then this is what I use in all my thumbnails. Like, I can put stuff like this. Like, okay, now let's change the color. So I made it like this dark blue. And now look. It's kind of like. Okay, my typing is weird today. It's kind of bold. It's kind of. It's really nice to look at. It's appealing. So this is also really good when you're making a thumbnail. Um, you can change the size here. You can change how sharp, how crisp, all of that. Uh, you can change the formatting here. And you can hit here and you can change the color in Adobe's new Spectrum wheel. And then um, up here, this is the warp text. And then I and then if I were to ever warp test, which I don't, I would use arc with a sixty percent, and then a plus five, and then a minus five. And then now look at that. Yeah, so it's basically just a curvature tool for text. And this next up just puts everything on the right, and this deselects it. And this check mark is when you're done, and then you can also make it 3D. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this is what a 3D workspace looks like. Yeah, so you can permanent 3D text. This is. I never use 3D text, to be honest. And I don't think it's needed. 
and uh, I just messed up my workspace. To um, put your workspace back to normal, go to Windows Workspace um, Reset Essentials. Oh, okay. No, turn off 3D. Um, excuse me. Okay, that's normal. I don't know why there's a big black. Okay, I don't know why there's a big black box here. This is weird. That's not what happened to me. Let's just move on. Ignore the blocks. Um, next up, we have the path selection tool. So, paths, um, like it shows in the demo, I don't really have a path here. You can drag them on top of each other. Like it shows in the demo, um, you have a whole shape, which is also considered a path, or in Adobe Illustrator, you can make your own paths. And um, here you can select it and you can drag it on top of each other and do all that. And then we also have the direct selection tool, and I can't model it on this image. I should have picked a better image to be honest. Um, using the pen tool, using all your points, anchor points, all of those, you can change the curve, you can change the shape, all of that. Um, next up, we have the rectangle tool. This is good for making thumbnails again. You choose a color, you drag it out, and then, oops, uh, here, I'm gonna toggle this off. Okay, I guess my Photoshop has glitched out. Um, I'm just going to, okay, I'm just going to go explain this and I won't be able to model, I'm sorry guys. Um, the rectangle tool, um, select the color, drag out, makes a rectangle. It also has the ellipse tool, triangle, polygon, line, custom shape. All do the same thing. You just drag out, make your shape, and they fill it with the color. The hand tool. Hands over different parts of an image. You can just hold space to do this also. And then uh, you can move around the image. This is really helpful. And the zoom tool. Uh, press wherever you want to zoom. And it will zoom in. And if you press out, it will zoom out. Um, we have the t edit toolbar. Basically what this does is you can just edit everything on the sidebar. So, yeah, no, I'm not going to go over that. Um, this is just the colors. This swaps the colors, the main color and the foreground color and all of these. This is the, um, what is it called? The quick mask mode. Instead of doing an uh, entire layer mask, it basically makes a quick mask where you can put over text, you can put over like a brush tool. And then our last but not least, we have the change screen mode. Um, basically what this does, it just changes your screen. And then I can do stuff like that. And then, um, yeah. I first need to find out how to um, get my Photoshop back to normal. Also, don't mind the mummy pig duck PSD. That was a meme I made about Peppa Pig. Mom, the bomb Peppa Pig. <laughs> I'm not weird. Trust me. Um. That's basically all we have for today. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, bye.